Greetings to all of you. A warm welcome to all of you in this Christmas season. And we're coming to the end of this Christmas season. So, we're going to end also this Christmas season reflections with two together. Here comes the bridegroom and time to go. Our readings are from 1 John chapter 5, 14 to 21 and John 3, verses 22 to 30. And the other scriptures are in the time to go. Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 4, 6 to 7. Or Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 5, 9 to 11. Acts 10, 34 to 38. Or Titus 2, verses 11 to 14. Chapter 3, verses 4 to 7. And then Luke chapter 3, verses 15 to 16 and 21 to 22. But we start first with, here comes the bridegroom. This is your pastor, Yeti. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom, the best man, who stands and listens for him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. In denying that he is the Messiah, John the Baptist uses what might seem to us an odd image. He calls himself the best man at the upcoming wedding when the Messiah will take his place as bridegroom. The image of the Messiah bridegroom would have seemed not odd but scandalous to John's hearers. They would have been familiar with the long love story told in the Old Testament, where God is a bridegroom and Israel is the chosen bride, not noted for being faithful. Once again, then, today's gospel is hinting on and more than hinting at the shocking, inexplicable idea that Jesus, the flesh and blood, Jesus, the Baptist, has already met, is somehow identified with God. No, 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 this cannot be. John's hearers would have said in horror, believing what we believe that the child whose birth we just celebrated less than three weeks ago, is indeed the Son of God in the flesh. We don't find the image horrifying, only puzzling. Since we know from the rest of the Gospel story that Jesus never married, we're left with a string of questions. Who is the bride? When is the wedding? Are we invited? The Old Testament tradition has already given us a clue about the bride. She is God's people, now including us. So yes, we will be at the wedding, unless we choose to drop out of God's people. The when is a bit more slippery. The post-Christmas liturgy, especially the liturgy of the hours, holds that the wedding between the Word of God and the humanity took place at Jesus' conception. The book of Revelation places it at the very end of the human story when Christ the Lamb, who was slain, takes as bride the new Jerusalem, and that is God's redeemed people and finally dwelling place. The slipperiness is a useful clue in our more gender-aware society that the envisioned God-human marriages is not a gender-based physical relationship. It is the astonishing covenant bound between God and humanity finally and profoundly realized in the Incarnation, where divin- uh, divinity and humanity are forced conjoined, forever conjoined. Remember, for the Israelites who first used the imagery, God had neither body nor gender, 
and the bridal people included both men and women, it utterly transcends our experience and therefore our language. Now, how do you live the reality of communion with God and others in the body of Christ? How does it affect interactions with others? How does it affect prayer? So we start now time to go, and I already give you all the readings. Now the scriptures of the says the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus and a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. The past week has already woven together Old and New Testament stories and images to show Jesus as the image, the human face of God at work in the world. And today's gospel stated in no uncertain terms that God, both Father and Spirit, claims Jesus as the Son. This claim isn't an invitation to Jesus' contemporary or today's readers to fall down in adoration and stay there. Adoration is certainly important, but today's feast celebrates Jesus' public baptismal sent off into a wider world to do God's work. And what is the work? Last Monday's Gospel summarized it succinctly. Jesus came to proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand, and it wasn't the kingdom expected by those who anticipated a political messiah come to restore the Davidic kingdom to its former glory. God's reign is better described as the original web of harmonized, I mean, harmonious relationships badly torn in Eden. And so Jesus preached a renewed, life-giving way for people to relate to one another, reverence, love, and service, instead of rejecting an undesirable foods with enemies and competition for goods. And he performed astonishing signs to show what he meant. The hungry fed in plenty, lepers healed and reunited with their communities, tax collectors invited to the table, and being who he was. He revealed God working through and beyond human interactions, incurable illnesses, healed sinners forgiven, and even the dead raised. If we ourselves are baptized, this feast also renews our own, sent off to God's work, in and with Christ to proclaim and live God's reign in the flesh, mending the threads of the torn web. Now meditation. How? How? God has given us the gift of creativity. So let's think and act creatively and humble, lest having bitten of more than we can chew. We give it all up and go home in despair. Let's start with calling alienated relatives, not peace conferences, speaking respectfully to neighbors with different accents, not resolving the whole immigration crisis today, putting away hurtful words, not destroying all weapons of violence by Tuesday, if we all paint in small strokes with the brushes and colors we've been given, God can finish the big picture. So, it's time to get going. Prayer. God of love and fidelity, draw us to yourself in Christ, that we may grow into that communion in our everyday life. And God, you make all things new in Christ. Pour out your Spirit upon us so that we may take our assigned places 
and persevere in your work. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my dear ones, this is the end. We're not the end of my broadcasting. Take it very serious when you go through these last meditations and reflections. It is so important for your life. May God bless you, heart and soul. May He give you the hope in a new plan as near as future. May God bless you. This is your Pastor Yari. Bye.